Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, um, I thought I'd do a second build update with this, uh, Purifying Flame Egg Elementalist. So, a comment I'd make with it, like, it's clearing the whole of Endgame, and, like, yeah, it, it gets the job done. It, I have two Void Stones down, um, you know, 85 out of 115 maps. It pushes down and delve, very similar to Detonate Dead. But the problem with the build that I've found and scaling up the damage to be able to do bosses is hugely problematic with the build. From a League Star scenario, worked fine. Like, leveled through, got there, you know, did everything I needed it to do initially. But we're at a stage now where it sort of hit a plateau without big investment to push it over the line. Um, and currently, a lot of the gear that it would need is extremely expensive because this League is not a cheap League. So, do I scale it up and spend the currency, or do I want to try something a little different that I was super keen to try as well, and respec? So, this is probably going to be the last update I do for this particular version of this build, but I do have a plan for where I want to take this character now, and that is I want to move it into Incinerate or Venting, because I've got a pretty cool um, POB based off my Tendrils POB from last league, for anyone who followed that. Uh, I'm pretty confident I can get this up into big DPS numbers and have a lot of fun with it. So anyway, that's where I'm going to take this build, just so everyone knows where I'm up to. But where are we currently at, POB-wise? So I've managed to push it to about 4.8 million Ignite Dot. I got it to about 144,000 effective hit pool. Now, if you take away the block, it's about 73,000, but that's not realistic because we're always blocking, you know, 75% to every hit. Um, so yeah, that absolutely is a thing. So we got to about 144% effective hit pool. Uh, now the other thing is we don't always have Herald of Ash. So, you know, it's about 4.1 mil Ignite Dot. Now we could get it to like probably cap out at 10. The initial tree I had, it just, to get it there is going to take too long. Like Ralakesh is like still like 14 div. Just like things like Anathemas are like 1.1, 1.9 div, like everything is so extremely expensive this league. Um, but that being said, like the build, the build slaps, like it's running around at like 270 depth delve right now and still pushing down, probably make it to about 400 depth delve. Um, but the biggest problem is it can't really take down Crystal Kings. It could at about probably say 250 around about ish and then any additional mods are really going to challenge the build to a point where like it's it's like okay it was good for a league starter but now we need something a little bit more sort of with impact um now it does like you know architects so so far the currency into this build is about 10 div like I, and i got that from a drop from an aspect um of curiosity from doing uh obviously delve and that drops from the architect. And then basically, you know, I, I threw out just farming a few div here or there, um, converting some resonators. So it's running off a relatively modest budget and doing the whole end game. So if you want to push this build further, you can absolutely push it further. For me, I'm not having so much fun with the build. So I want to try something that looks really cool that I'm super keen on the new transgen for because I was big on incinerate in 3.21 and um, or 3.22. So I'm going to switch this into an incinerator build and make a mighty incinerator build. Um, similar to my Lightning Tendrils build from last league because I just like the channeling playstyle. Anyway, let's get into the POB breakdown and explain how all of it works. And yeah, and for anyone who hasn't played this build, this is what it looks like. And so this is now on Chaos Inoculation, which is running the, uh, the CI node up here. And that also means that we have to take this known Zealot's Oath. We don't currently have a... Um, uh, thread of hope which would require a large thread of hope and that means we could save all these points in here and then basically push into here and here okay so where do our uh, damage configs come from all right so major gods we have brine king that stops us from getting stunned we have aberith this deals with our burning damage on the ground and ignites uh now we have time spent stationary we set to five the reason why is because we're running nature's patience and generally like when you're casting if you're delving which is what this build was intended for um you're going to be standing still uh now power frenzy charges endurance we don't have that but we can actually tick on endurance charges and we get to 223,000. the reason why we can do that is because we have a enduring cry automation setup in our weapon one 
So basically in our first weapon in here, we have Enduring Cry with automation, uh, Call to Arms, sorry. And uh, that gets us over the line with that. So we always have an Enduring Cry, which means that we get Endurance Charges because in the absence of relocation, we need something to do that. Um, and then basically Consecrated Ground, well, Purifying Flame always drops Consecrated Ground. We have Convergence, this procs with bosses. So obviously procs off Heart of Destruction. And then basically uh, enemies are branded because we use Arcanus brand to proc a curse. Uh, and then burning enemies, ignited enemies, shocked enemies. We managed to spec back into Shaper of Storms, which gives us a huge amount of increased dot. Uh, and then sapped ground comes from our boots. So we got the implicit for drop sapped ground. And this is a searing exarch roll. So these boots are quite good. Um, and then basically we also have Exposed to Fire, which we have on our gloves, and we have Master of Fire in our tree. And for anyone who's wondering what Master of Fire is, it's this node here. It allows uh, enemies to have fire exposure. Um, and yeah, basically uh, Guardian Pinnacle Damage. So like, it's a really basic build. Like, it's basically the same as Wave of Conviction. Arguably, you could just switch this between Wave of Conviction and this work basically the same. Uh, is it great for taking down, like you know, super mega uber bosses, like, if you, if you continue to invest in anything like this, it's going to continue to carry, but at this stage, I just want to play something a little more interactive, because I like crit-based channeling builds. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get into the gearing. Okay, so gearing on this, I managed to switch out the helm, because uh, this is all CI gear, so I managed to get a pretty modest uh, hubris circlet, and now the price of this hopefully hasn't skyrocketed through the, uh, through the wazoo. So it's about 100 chaos, all right, give or take uh, for a helm like this. And then you can literally just craft these modifiers on with Ickers and the, and the other crafting mat that I always forget the name of. We've got Aegis Aurora. Uh, this is only like one div. Uh, so you can farm this out of Delve, basically. Sell a few resonators and you're good. Uh, now, I did get my six link um, uh, Incandescent Heart. And these are only like 2.5 div. So I got my Aspect of Curiosity. Uh, and so... Yeah, that was really easy to afford. And this isn't a corrupted variant, so you can yeah go to town recrafting because it's really easy to recraft off sockets except for greens um, in this chest. Uh, replica dragons, fight, uh, dragons Flight. And so we can never get that mod. These weren't very expensive as, e uh, as well. Uh, replica Ember Wake. This is about 40C now, so pretty affordable. Ming's Heart's like 2C, so it's a nothing value ring. Now, my wand, I managed to get a pretty good fire damage roll, one with plus one to fire damage, and then I just crafted on fire damage uh, over time. Arguably, like, that just looks like it's more expensive because of the modifiers, but you could just get these base and just make sure you got an open suffix and then just literally craft that on from your um, crafting bench. So, you yeah, know, no brainer there. The other thing you could do is you could also, like, create a really cool uh, wand based on the league mechanic because it's basically a Harvest 2.0 mechanic. Uh, now gloves. So I managed to get some pretty good gloves. I did. Um, I did just craft on inflict fire exposure and uh, and proliferation on that myself. So these gloves are like you know twenty to fifty C, and then you just literally craft that on yourself. Don't waste your time. You can just farm that out of some T fourteen or T sixteen maps and do altars. Uh, my uh, belt again, like you know, not a super expensive belt, but I did just get like uh, energy. Uh, regeneration roll so this is like a one div belt and my boots are not overtly expensive either so i did get strength on my boots too though it looks like they don't exist um they're not that expensive so yeah they're you know probably a 100 chaos 50 chaos something like that so easily farmable and then i literally just use the bench to get you know the off color reds on that as well and then i literally crafted on the implicits uh, myself now, Taste of Hate in the build is only like 40C, so it's nice and cheap. And the rest of the flasks are not optimized in any way, shape, or form. So I literally just picked it up. I think I only bought the last flask, and that was it. Uh, and then, yeah, there's nothing else in the tree itself except for the Cluster Jewel, which was like one div. This was like 40 Chaos or something like that. And Nature's Patience wasn't expensive either. It's like 15C, so it's dirt cheap. So like this build is not expensive to get online, at least to the current level. Like we're a fair few days, we're a few days in the league now, so it's affordable within an acceptable range. It's the gems that cost a little more, and we'll get into that now. Okay, so gem setups in the helm: flame surge, arcanist brand, flammability, and I've got flame dash broken, so off the link on a you know a, a broken three link and one link. 
just so that doesn't cross over with Arcanus Brand. Otherwise, it'll try and cast Flame Surge when you hit the Arcanus Brand, and that's going to be stupid. Uh, in the wand, I've got Call to Arms and Enduring Cry, and I switch that out with Infernal Cry as I need to. Uh, it just depends on if I want to take more damage or not, because I do like having three Endurance Charges up. And then I also have level 16 Clarity. That just keeps my mana reserve, my uh, my mana flowing so that I don't run out of mana, and I can sustain casting Purifying Flame and or everything else. Which, as you can see, once you start proccing exposure, it synergizes with Mastermind of Discord, and that just amps up your mana generation significantly. Um, okay, in the chest, I've got Awaken Added Fire Damage, which arguably is the only real expensive gem in this, and this is like 2.7 div currently because it's level 5 and gives plus 1 to gem level. And Purifying Flame itself, like you can pick these up, you know, get them like low level and then just 20% them, um, and it's all hunky dory. Uh, Awaken Burning Damage as well is a little expensive at the moment. It's like 4 div, 4.4 uh, div. Again, I had one really good drop of an Architect in Delve at like depth 200. So is that unrealistic if you run depth horizontal depth 200 and just hit Architects because they spawn enough down there? No, it's achievable. Um, Swift Affliction just leveled that up. Cruelty leveled that up. Unbound Albums leveled that up. And they don't even have 20% on them yet. So, yes, yeah, you can see, you can put some power into this build. I just want to switch it out and do something cooler with it. Uh, Enlightened is just level 2, so it's pretty ratchet. So, 200 Chaos, which is farmable out of Delve. And then Discipline, Tempest Shield, and Determination. Uh, in the boots, we've got Casting Damage Taken, Molten Shell, Enfeeble, and Herald of Purity, which we're currently not even running in the build, to be honest with you. And I just need to make sure that that is taken out of the POB as well. So overall, like, the, you know, this is about as far as the investment goes. Is it really expensive? No, like I said, like at this stage, about 10 div, maybe 12 div, give or take. Um, you know, someone might count that up. Um you know, when they're reading back the video, but, you know, don't grill me too hard. It's late in the night and my mathing is not great. Is that really expensive in the first few days of League? Not really. Like, you know, that's really, in the scheme of things, easy. If you're just, like, map farming or delving or whatever mechanic you're doing, it's attainable, especially when Divines are only worth 130 Chaos at the moment as well, so they're not very expensive in the League, and they've dropped in the last two days as well. Anyway, that's it for gem setup, so let's talk about the skill tree next. Okay, so it's like 3.7 mil dot, by the way. I fixed this up, so I got rid of um, Herald of Purity, and I also ticked on the normal discipline or vow discipline, so we have 244k effective hit pulls. So it's tanky. Um, okay, so uh, skill tree. So basically on the respec, this is the route we went. So we basically switched the tree and inverted from here and then respec these lines in here to get Arcane Will and Arcane Focus. Up into Searing Heat, and then we take the uh, Whispers of Doom. We also take the Curse Mastery, because we have a Cast on Damage Taken in Feeble setup, which gives us a fair bit of defense. So this also means that it reduces Crit Strike um, damage by about 40% as well. And then we obviously need Chaos Inoculation, because we're a CI build with our Influence and our 8% increased damage per Aura on us. And then I've also got the 40% uh, increased damage um, converted to fire damage as well, physical damage converted to fire. Then I come across and grab Mystic Bulwark and the 12% ma uh, mana, reservation, uh, mana Reservation Efficiency node. And I just have like a really basic gem in this setup too. Uh, into Firewalker, into Unnatural Calm, and then to the Energy Shield Mastery, which gives us 100% increased Energy Shield from the Equipped Helm. Uh, we have Elemental Overload with one Agility Point in here too, coming up into Arcane Guarding with Shield Mastery that gives us 11% Attack Block, which gets us up to Max Block, which is 75-75, so our Glancing Blows works. If you have less than 75-75, you're going to notice major issues with your defenses. Uh, and then we come across and we grab Breath of Flame, Heart of Flame as well. We come across and grab Zealot's Oath, Holy Fire... I did put in the Burning Mastery here, but realistically, you're probably better off taking the Regeneration because it's 126 Regen, which is a lot more valuable to you um, realistically, and you're going to survive a lot longer, especially if you're delving or doing maps or bosses. Um, and then basically, you come down, grab your Sovereignty, we'll grab Faith and Steel. We want the 10% physical damage converted to Chaos Damage, so that we write off 10% physical damage inbound. We grab Divine Judgment, and then we come down, we just have like another random like early leveling jewel and then we have glancing blows as well which just gets us to max block so we don't need to take any of these block nodes in here either 
Now, cluster jewels set up. So far, I had a, uh, a two socket smoking remains and master of fire. As you can see, like if you wanted to push this build further, you really could. Um, it's got the potential to. And then wasting affliction and vile invigoration. And then a nature's patience. And that's all she wrote. Now, the other thing I also have in here is shaper of flames is your first priority to shaper of storms, to mastermind of discord, and to heart of destruction. And that's basically your ascendancy setup. Okay, so I hope this helps with your conversion to CI if you're playing this, playing along with this build. As far as the reason why I wanted to switch, I think I made it, uh, sort of touched on it at the start of the video. I just prefer a different level of playstyle. And while this build is really cool, it doesn't give me that oomph factor that like Lightning Tendrils did last league. I really enjoy builds that are just like stand on a boss, face tank it, and just absolutely chank through the, um, through the, the, you know, delve sort of areas with you know flames or in last league's case lightning tendrils um i just like that really cool channeling like crit play style it sort of makes you feel like you're melee but a spellcaster at the same time and you know it's it's just down to personal preference um that being said the target tree is still very much a good target tree to go for for this so if you want to continue to level this build follow the uh, the target tree and i'll put a link in the description to that and, um, and then, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Um, so, yeah, if, uh, if this video helps you out and, uh, yeah, if you're following along with the build and you're enjoying it, um, drop me a like, drop me a sub. Um, but, yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys later and uh, have a good one.